Okay, Assalamualaikum. Boleh dengar tak? Can you hear me? Assalam, boleh dengar mas. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Okay, so let's begin our kelabis sama kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, so uh, sekejap ya. So how's your uh, mid semester break? Buat apa je kat rumah? Nak cuti pun bukan boleh pergi mana-mana kan? Okay, uh, by the way, how's your test? Okay ke? Saya boleh tak... tahan lah, Miss. Boleh lah. Okay, sebenarnya dah, dah, dah habis. Dah lama dah habis marking. Saya tunggu dapat arahan je daripada koordinator. Uh, uh, Kalau kita boleh... Uh, pas dekat you, kita boleh pass lah. Biasanya maybe uh, this week lah. InsyaAllah saya akan bagi return ya. Eh. Saya akan return balik. Uh, saya bagi markah and also saya return. Maybe you boleh check kat situ. Okay. Mm. So you nampak screen kan? Sebab mm, kelas saya tengah hari tadi pun bila saya present yang bukan screen macam biasalah tak bergerak saya punya slide ni. Sekarang uh, boleh nampak saya punya slide tak? Boleh Miss, boleh. Oh, okay. Sekejap eh, lama tinggal ni. Lupa dah. Kita stop kat mana? Okay, kita stop kat sini. Kita tak sempat discuss checkpoint 17. But I think because two weeks kan, kita ada gap. So I think we need to recap. Hmm... Nak recap pun sekejap eh. Okay basically uh, last time we stop at uh, titration right. Okay I hope you still remember we have titration between strong acid strong base, strong acid weak base, weak acid and strong base okay. And then you belajar macam mana, you nak draw curve dia macam mana And then let's say for strong acid, strong base What should be in the beaker, what should be in the burette It depends on the question Okay, and then yang penting bila dia tanya pH at equivalence is actually pH of salt So strong acid, strong base we know that uh, you will get neutral salt So pH is equal to 7 Okay How about let's say uh, you are the titration between weak base and strong acid Kan? We base strong acids, okay, we, uh, automatically kita tahu you dah belajar hydrolysis of salt. We, we, we know that we will get uh, acidic salt. Sebab strong acid tu kan, dia lagi kuat. So, that you dah dapat acidic salt. So, at equivalent, bila dia tanya pH at equivalent, must be less than 7. Itu teori dia. But you belajar dalam titration, you boleh calculate. I mean the exact value of the pH. Less than 7 tu berapa? Ha, kat sini you boleh kira kan? Okay, so nak kira tu macam mana you have to find the mole of uh, I mean the concentration uh, at equivalent lah. So nak dapat concentration of salt tu basically you kena dapat mole kat sini kan at equivalent. Uh, boleh nampak eh saya punya slide ni bergerak eh. Kalau dia tak bergerak bagi tahu awal-awal eh. Okay, uh, this one eh. Calculation uh, weak base strong acid bila dia tanya pH at equivalent you mesti tahu you have to find concentration right sebab nak dapat pH concentration so concentration apa concentration of salt salt yang mana dia punya uh, ion dia itulah okay so mole tu is divided uh, with the uh, total volume acid and base ha, kat sini ada a bit different lah sebab you prepare this one from scratch remember kalau you belajar hydrolysis of salt Macam contoh soalan tu, you imagine dia dah, dah siapkan salt tu. So you just dapatkan je berapa pH dia. But for this uh, uh, subtopic, titration, 
you you imagine you prepare from scratch uh, Sama macam you buat kuih lah Sama ada you pergi beli kuih tu You check pH dia for example eh Ataupun you buat daripada awal uh, Macam nak buat sendiri Macam kuih raya lah you nak buat sendiri Dengan you beli dari kedai uh, So bila prepare from scratch Of course you punya calculation tu akan jadi uh, Kena kira dari awal lah Daripada starting point dia So that's, that's why The concentration tu mesti divide by the volume total. Okay. So ni with base strong acid. So sama juga kalau you pergi uh, weak acid strong base. Weak acid strong base. Weak acid strong base eh. So uh, in this case, uh, okay, theoretically we know that the pH is more than 7. So kalau more than 7 itu theoretically Uh, teori dia lah kita tahu So macam nak kira again sama juga uh, Konsep yang sama Okay at equivalent means that you want to find The pH of salt Okay so again sama juga Concentration apa? Concentration uh, Salt tu lah which is basic salt kan uh, Also divide uh, Divide with the uh, Total volume. Volume acid campur volume Base. Okay. Ni semua kita dah Belajar uh, uh, Last two weeks Okay so Lama tinggalkan. I hope you boleh recap balik lah eh. Okay what you have learned uh, last two weeks. And then saya ada mention uh, ada satu checkpoint kita miss tadi. Uh, kalau sempat saya discuss lah. Kalau tak nanti maybe uh, either saya bagi dia punya jawapan ataupun you can try and um, give it to me. Saya try untuk check. Okay, sebab kita dah a bit tertinggal sikit sebab patutnya minggu ni kita masuk electrochem sekali tapi sebab kita buffer pun tak masuk lagi. So I am afraid kita tak cukup masa. Okay, so kita continue dulu. Okay, okay. Saya ingat checkpoint 17 ni kita tak sempat nak discuss. Okay, so kita try lah. Kita tengok uh, calculation uh, of pH uh, between weak acid and strong base. Okay, so here an aqueous solution of weak acid HA has an initial pH of 2.5. Okay. Dia kata kat sini initial. pH asal eh. Maksudnya before any titration lah. Okay. Sebelum you masukkan any base. Okay. Lepas dia kata is titrated with. Uh, remember. Always uh, bila you dapat soalan macam ni. Okay. You try to uh, imagine and then you draw. Sebab soalan. Okay. Soalan checkpoint selalu macam dia tanya macam ni je. Calculate calculate. Biasanya uh, kalau you check lah the previous uh, past years ya, kadang dia ada tambahan. Dia ada A, ada B, ada C, ada anak-anak dia kan. Uh, ada setempat dia uh, dia akan tanya uh, draw ataupun sketch the titration curve. You nak sketch you kena faham siapa yang akan berada di uh, di beaker ataupun critical flask. Who, who will be in the burret. So with this, I think bila you faham kat sini, it's titrated with. Means that in the burret is the NaOH. So dalam conical flask yang kat bawah tu, itu adalah uh, ni? acid. Okay, so boleh nampak eh, saya lukis ni, slide dia nampak eh. Okay, so at least bila you tahu, kita tahu uh, we will put the uh, apa tu namanya, electrode ataupun bulb Uh, the pH beta tu Kita akan letak kat bawah So the initial pH Should be less uh, acidic lah Sebab HA So logic tak? Betul lah So pH 2.5 So the acid Okay uh, kat situ lah you boleh uh, Apa Ada keyword Key point-key point yang penting Untuk you tengok kat situ Macam whether betul tak You punya apa uh, Assumption tu Either the uh, acid tu kat bawah ke Acid tu kat atas ke Okay So when the HA, concentration HA is equal to A minus, the pH is 4.3. Okay. So this part basically saya tak explain in details uh, during titration because actually kita akan belajar lebih detail benda ni dekat dalam tajuk buffer. Tapi because soalan ni keluar kat sini so tak apa. Kalau you tengok balik ni lah. Ada certain, ada satu point kat sini I mentioned that pH is equals to pKa Where HA concentration is equals to A minus at half equivalent point Okay, bila concentration of acid Okay, HA acid kan is equals to concentration of the conjugate base Bila dia exactly sama at Kita panggil dia half equivalent Bila pH dia equals to pKa Okay, 
So, bila you patah balik kat soalan tadi. Sekejap eh. This one. H A equals to A minus means that, okay, kat sini we will assume that this pH is, uh, dia tak mention about the concentration, okay. Tapi ada point penting kat sini. H A is equals to A minus. Okay, so and then they calculate this row as you uh, calculate the Ka of HA and ada dua soalan eh and the initial concentration of HA. So apa cara dia nak buat, okay. So nampak tak kat sini, when the HA equals to A minus, the pH is 4.3. So we know that here, bila concentration tu sama, okay, pH is equals to PKA. Macam saya cakap, saya tak ajar detail. Sebenarnya benda ni is based on formula. pH equals to PKA plus log uh, uh, A minus over HA. Sebenarnya ni ada formula. You akan belajar detail dekat dalam buffer nanti ya. Eh. Okay, bila concentration tu sama, A minus HA sama, sama kan, dia akan jadi log 1. Log 1 is equals to 0. So that's why pH equals to PKA. Ah. Uh. Lepas tu saya macam, kenapalah soalan ni ada dekat depan kan? Okay, tapi memanglah dia related juga dengan titration. Okay, cuma you tak belajar details dalam buffer. Okay, so that's why pH equals to PKA means that the PKA value is also 4.3. <coughs> okay, lepas tu soalan tanya, what is the value for KA? So you just, uh, kalau you tekan tu shift lock lah. Okay, you dapatlah value of Ka. Lepas tu, uh, the second question is calculate the initial concentration of HA solution. HA eh, initial concentration. Dia tak ada bagi, dia bagi pH. So, dia macam you have to reverse. Biasanya initial diberi kan. Now you have to find the initial. So, reverse lah. Okay, so bila nak reverse, so how to get the value of this one is actually negative x, right? So, this is x, this is x. So how to get the x? Because we already know the pH. So pH is negative log H plus 2.5. So from here you can get H plus where it is actually the value of x. Okay. Uh, the reverse lah. Okay. So you dapat x. Now you dapat equilibrium dia y tolak x. Kita sebab tak tahu kita letak y lah. So here is actually Ka is equals to x darab x kan. Y tolak x. So you can find y since kita dah tahu semua value of x. Okay, part yang lain sikit tu actually kat sini lah. Part pH equals to PKA ni eh. Okay, so uh, for the titration, uh, let's say kalau you tak faham ke atau tak ingat, you boleh refer balik pada saya punya video lah. Okay, saya ada upload dah lama dah juga dekat YouTube tu. Refer balik untuk refreshkan balik lah sebab this one of course akan masuk dalam final uh, acid base saturation eh. Okay, so now we move to the indicator. Okay, so acid base indicator uh, is a weak organic acid or a dye whose color differs from that of its on conjugate base. So basically indicator ni dia adalah uh, weak acid. Okay, so many dyes uh, change color depending on the pH of solution. So for most titrations, the titration curve show a very large change. Kalau ingat lagi, large change kat sini ni yang maksud dia steep portion. Contoh kalau first naik, lepas tu dia naik mendadak kan, steep portion. Ah, So ini yang kita panggil very large change. Okay, so uh, even though you masuk, you imagine kan kita buat titration, kita titik drop by drop kan. Ah, uh, Even though uh, dia, da, dia naik sikit, 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 tiba-tiba dia naik mendadak kan. Uh, kalau you buat eksperimen, you boleh nampak lah sebenarnya. You can experience this. Tapi sebab tak tak buat eksperimen kan. Tapi sebenarnya macam even, eh masuk setitik je, tiba-tiba naik mendadak macam tu. Kalau you plot graph. Ataupun bila masuk setitik, tiba-tiba colour tu berubah jadi warna pekat. Uh, sebab dia akan ada tiba-tiba very large change uh, dekat kawasan uh, steep portion ni. Dia tiba-tiba naik mendadak. Okay, first dia naik sikit-sikit, uh, okay, gradually and then dia akan naik, dia sharp rapidly, lepas tu dia naik balik gradually. Okay. So this indicator therefore can be used to determine the end point. Okay, remember kita ada beza between end point dengan equivalent point kan. Ha, end point ni kita guna indicator lah. Okay. So if the, uh, you, we can get the indicator, uh, the end point, uh, if the PKA of the indicator is more or less equals to the pH at equivalent. 
Remember? You ada tadi saya ada mention sikit kan perkataan pH equals to pKa. So sebenarnya pH equals to pKa tu uh, kita consider sebab mol dia sama kan. Mol yang tadi kan. Walaupun formula dia kita tak tak tunjuk lagi. Mol yang ni sama. Dapat pH equals to pKa tu. Kiranya half equivalent. Sorry sorry. Half equivalent. So you boleh guna indicator tu. Okay so that's why macam saya pernah cakap dulu sebelum ni uh, even we have so many indicators you cannot simply use indicator macam hari ni nak guna color biru lah hari nak guna nak guna metal orange lah hari nak guna metalin blue lah tak boleh. You have to choose indicator uh, that the PKA of that indicator close to the pH equivalent. Ah, uh, You kena tahu jugalah. Okay. So this uh, common, uh, ni tak semua eh, ada uh, common, some common acid base indicators. Okay, uh, according to the pH, for example, crystal violet is from 0 to 1.8 maybe. Okay, kalau you tengok kat sini, uh, phenolphthalein, paling selalu kita guna. Dia the, uh, the punya range dia is uh, uh, around 8 to 10. Okay, you boleh nampak kat sini. Kita banyak guna untuk strong acid strong base. Sedangkan strong acid strong base pH dia tujuh kat sini. So you can imagine kalau you drop phenolphthalein basically um, biasanya dia bila colour tu dia akan jadi bila terlebih tu dia akan jadi sangat pekat lah pink dia. Okay, very difficult to uh, get the equivalent point. Tapi sebabkan dia punya range dia masih dalam range that's why we can still use the phenolphthalein. For example macam itulah. Okay. So uh, another indicators. Okay. So ada uh, range dia. So semua range ni akan menentukan sesuai ke tak sesuai lah uh, dengan you punya uh, curve tu eh. Okay kita tengok checkpoint nak tengok sesuai ke tak sesuai. Okay, saya ada tambah table lah supaya senang nak refer. Okay, so sebelum ni tak ada dua table ni. Okay, contoh first question, which indicator or indicators would you use for the following acid-base titration graph? So you check dulu the equivalent point. Okay, so the equivalent now is pH dia 7. So this is between strong acid, strong base. So apa yang kita nak buat? Refer to the titration curve dulu. Okay, that's why saya letak uh, table tu eh. Titration curve equivalent to pH 7, the pH change is from 3.5 until 9.5. Ni dia punya range dia sangat besar. Okay. So you can try to get the indicator around this range. 3.5 up to 9.5. Ah, Sebenarnya dia boleh. Okay. Macam saya cakap tadi contoh eh. Kita selalu guna phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein basically kalau you tengok range 8.2 until 10. Dia lebih daripada tujuh. Sedangkan equivalent kita tujuh. Memanglah dia lagi bagus kalau you dapat sentuh nombor tujuh tu. Okay. Tapi because of this range is still um, under the steep portion of the titration curve. So that's why we can, we normally use phenolphthalein. Satu phenolphthalein ni sebab senang nak dapat. Lepas tu kita banyak pakai phenolphthalein. Okay. Tapi kalau maybe kalau you rasa macam nak lagi tepat, you carilah yang you boleh, uh, I mean you can get seven in the range. Sebab kita tahu dia tujuh kan. Uh, sebab kita susah juga nak cakap macam okay strong acid strong base senang lah kita tahu pH dia mesti tujuh. How about macam we acid uh, strong base pH dia more than seven tapi kita tak tahu kan kita nak pilih je indicator unless you dah kira. Jadi kita tak tahu more than seven tu berapa. So that's why kita based on pH change. So pH change you kena ingat. At least lah, you memorize this pH change. You tahu range dia daripada berapa ke berapa, you boleh pilih dia punya indicator. Okay, so berbalik soalan ni tadi. Uh, which indicator or indicators means that you can choose more than one. So metal green, boleh ke kita ambil ni 0.2 until 1.8? Sangat rendah. You tengok balik kat sini, dia punya range dia 3.5 starting dia. So of course you cannot use this one. Maksudnya dia ukur tu kat area bawah. Tak sempat nak pergi ke valent. So tak boleh lah. Warna tu tak berubah pun. Okay. Ah, maksud dia macam tu eh. So kalau 3.5 until 6.5 means that uh, it's better. Okay actually macam metal orange you dah start sebenarnya boleh pakai. Dia sentuh lah. Dia sentuh sikit. 
macam tu material orange and then it tie red metal purple some, something like that lah okay so sampailah up to sebab dia until 9.5 kan okay so up to time of the line lah you boleh choose okay alexander yellow ni dah terlebih so dia tak sesuai itu maksud dia eh ini ini saya bagi dia nampak banyak pasal kita ada banyak pilihan. So normally dalam exams dia tak akan bagi sebanyak ni. Dia akan bagi yang macam obvious atau common lah. Ha, macam mana satu yang you boleh guna. Okay kalau ni macam terlalu banyak. Sebab satu lagi because for strong acid strong base stick portion dia sangat besar. Kan daripada 3.5 to 9.5. Okay how about sec, uh, second question. You tengok kat sini equivalent point is 8.72. Means that dia more than 7 Kan? So bila more than 7 You tengok balik page change je 6.5 until 10.5 So here You can start with Bromo Cressol Purple Until 10.5 Somewhere around here Macam tu Kan? Ha. So kena make sure Uh, mesti terkena dengan dia punya tu lah uh, Equivalent point ataupun basically lebih tepat adalah Terkena dengan dia punya stick portion Okay cuma let's say lah eh Kalau buat banyak betul dia kata pula Which one is more suitable Okay for me choose the one that uh, Attach uh, attach pula Dia akan uh, apa uh, Terkena dekat that equivalence point In the middle lagi bagus lah Okay as at least Macam 8.72 kan we know that it is 8.72 So kalau saya lah eh, Maybe this one ke Cressol red Or thymol blue or Phenophthalene ha. Okay kalau lah dia suruh Pula pilih lagi yang the best ha, Itu maksud saya eh Sebab susah uh, indicator ni Sebab dia range kan so that's, that's why Saya susah juga nak cakap specific Answers for this Okay, so C, you tengok Equivalent is 5.28 So basically less than 7 So the pH change from 3 to 7 So 3 to 7 means that dia mesti yang rendah punya lah eh uh, 7 maybe here kan 7 ada dalam ni 3 around here lah Ni dia punya range Eh 3, ah yes Cuma for me, kalau ni 5.28 kan? 5.28 basically Yang ni lah kot yang paling cantik sekali Antara tiga tu ha, Macam you dah dah, 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 dah dah apa? You dah tapis, okay Ikut dia punya pH change Dan you tapis sekali lagi ikut dia punya uh, pH of equivalent point ha, Tu akan you akan dapat lagi tepat lah Pilihan dia eh Okay, any question for the indicator? Indicator ni sebenarnya tak adalah apa uh, yang penting you tahu range lah. That's why saya cakap dengan student at least please memorize the pH change for the equivalent point. Sebab yang ni you jangan hafal, tak perlu pun. Saya pun tak hafal range-range ni sebab indicator terlalu banyak. Dia boleh bagi macam-macam. It's just that yang penting you faham pH change, you tahu macam mana you nak tengok. Nak guna tu kat mana. Okay, so clear eh. Okay, so now we move to buffer eh. Uh, I think this is the last, ah yelah, uh, the last subtopic. Okay, so dia sebelum kita masuk satu topik yang baru eh. Sebab buffer ni agak berat juga. Uh, kalau you rasa imagine uh, titration tu berat, uh, for me buffer lagi berat. Sebab you kena betul-betul faham, okay, what does the meaning by buffer? Okay, so um, Again, saya saya suka untuk recap balik. You belajar acid base kan? You belajar daripada first you belajar apa? Teori. You belajar teori Arrhenius, uh, Bronsted Lowry, uh, Lewis kan? Teori je dulu. Lepas tu you belajar strength, strength of base, strength of acid. Kan? Okay, itu introduction. Lepas tu you dah start belajar uh, how to calculate pH. pH Now, the normal way you calculate pH is by using uh, pH equals to negative log HCO plus. For strong acid, tak ada masalah. Negative log HCO plus is equals to negative log of acid. 
sebab dia completely dissociate, right? 100%. But then because asid ni yang paling banyak sebenarnya dalam duty ni adalah weak asid. And then weak asid pula dia not completely dissociate. Okay, ataupun not completely ionized. So, you cannot simply using negative log acid. Tak boleh kan? So, that's why you have to use KA. Ha, that's why masa tu kita kenalkan ice table. Lepas tu kita simplifykan lagi, you boleh guna uh, uh, simplifying method kan, direct approach. Yang guna formula uh, HO plus equals to square root C times KA. Okay. So, lepas tu sama juga you apply untuk base. Sama case dia kan. Lepas tu slowly you belajar apa, eh? salt. So kita tahu salt ni is actually sebab bila you belajar acid base. Of course acid plus base you tahu you dapat salt plus water. Macam tu lah kan. Okay. So yang penting salt tu. And then because of you belajar now you ada weak acid, you ada weak base. Bila you you apa you crosskan dia campur main campur je end up dia tak semestinya akan dapat neutral salt, right? Neutral salt tak ada masalah because neutral you akan dapat pH 7 which is equal to pH of water. But kita tahu, okay, bila macam tadi saya baru mention kan kalau uh, strong acid dengan weak base, you akan dapat pH dia acidic salt because ion yang uh, apa yang boleh hydrolyze in water tu adalah akan menghasilkan HO plus. Okay, so itu you belajar pasal salt kan. So sama jugalah untuk salt yang lain-lain. So you belajar, you imagine salt tu you you imagine you beli, imagine beli lah eh. You beli salt, you check pH dia macam tu. Okay, after that you learn about uh, titration. Ah, uh, Titration ni macam saya cakap ni. Uh, you belajar, okay, tak naklah beli, uh, kita nak buat sendiri. Macam, macam saya cakap lah, buat kuih raya. Uh, tapi bila buat sendiri, sebenarnya sama je, you akan dapat salt balik. You akan dapat salt juga. Acid plus base dapat salt. Cuma, kita nak prepare tu lagi renyah lah. Of course kan, yang yang salt you beli tu, uh, orang yang prepare tu lagi renyah. Uh, you beli, you kira je pH dia. Now, you nak kira pH juga, tapi you prepare sendiri. So, of course, you have to uh, take into consideration uh, acid tu berapa mol dia, berapa volume dia, uh, base tu berapa. Okay? So, itu untuk titration. So, benda ni dia bukan macam berpecah, dia berkait-berkait semua. E even the buffer solution also berkait. Okay? So, now kita akan masuk buffer. Okay? Buffer ni pula, uh, saya tak sempat nak send dekat you uh, the latest slide note. Because the latest saya baru dapat pagi tadi. Okay, banyak sangat pembetulan especially on the buffer lah. Even titration hari tu pun banyak pembetulan kan. Tapi for me pembetulan yang very minor. Minor means that minor macam mana? Correction tu minor tapi dia memberi efek yang besar kalau you tak betulkan. Contoh macam saya cakap minor dia error tu yang salah. Tapi kalau you tak betulkan error tu you akan ditolak markah. Lepas tu saya cakap minor correction for titration eh, minor correction tapi kalau you tak betulkan, maksudnya you refer pada yang salah means that you akan hilang markah. So remember, I'll all, I always always remind you that arrow is very important in uh, titration. Uh, bukan titration sajalah untuk acid base. Okay, kita ada because kita ada dua jenis arrow. Single arrow and reversible arrow. Kena tahu bila masa nak pakai. Okay, you akan pakai sampai even buffer pun ada arrow yang yang you kena stress kan. Okay, so um, maybe later uh, because saya record kan benda ni so saya akan masukkan dekat dalam uh, YouTube nanti later. Uh, after this saya akan bagi the revised version. Then you you boleh refer balik lah eh notes tu dengan uh, video. Okay, sebab saya dah tak ingat dah part mana yang dibetulkan. For me terlalu banyak. So end up saya copy the whole part. Saya tepik balik dekat saya punya slide. Okay. So now kita masuk buffer solution. Okay. At the end of this subtopic it should be able to explain acidic and basic buffer. So even buffer pun kita ada acid and base. Okay. Buffer. Okay. And in terms of acid and base components that not neutralize one another. Okay. Secondly explain the common ion effect. So what is 
what does it mean by common ion effect? Okay, that suppress the suppress the ionization of acid and in buffer solution. Third, explain qualitatively, okay, on how buffer solution works. Bila kita kata qualitatively means that you need to justify. Uh, explain lah. Nama pun explain kan. Kalau quantitative, you boleh kira. Now you kena explain. So means that you kena betul-betul faham untuk you explain macam mana buffer tu bekerja. Okay. Nanti saya akan explain lah. And then explain qualitatively the effectiveness of buffer. Macam mana buffer tu efektif. Sebab buffer ni dia ada part, ada certain part dia dah tak efektif. Okay. And then solve problem of course lah Bila solving problems of course akan ada uh, Calculation related to buffer by using Henderson has about equation Okay ini equation terakhir yang you perlu tahu Basically yang tadi saya ada tunjuk Kalau ingat lagi lah pH equals to pKa plus log Basically actually in normal saya suka buat uh, Secara ringkas base over acid Base over acid ni apa maksud dia Dia boleh jadi mole, dia boleh jadi concentration Ha, saya akan explain little lah. Ha, ini nama equation ni adalah Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Okay. So <coughs> types of buffer eh. So we have uh, a buffer solution is a solution of weak conjugate acid base pair. Uh, yes. Sekejap saya tengah nak faham kaya ni. Okay. Sebab kita okay. Bila kita kata types of buffer of buffer ni kat sini. Kita ada dua jenis tadi, acidic and basic buffer. So basically this buffer, apa maksud buffer ni kan? Dia satu solution, a mixture of the solution. Dalam tu, so kalau dia acidic, dalam tu dia ada weak acid dengan dia punya conjugate base. Kalau dia basic buffer, dia ada weak base dengan dia punya conjugate acid. Kalau you ingat lagi eh, hmm, acid lah eh, contoh HF. HF kan weak acid kan? Uh, bronze lori Dia weak acid kan? Weak acid uh, pecah dalam ion dia dapat F minus plus HO plus Maksud dia kat sini Dia ada weak acid dan juga conjugate base This is conjugate base right? Okay Yang penting maksud saya dia nak ada dua benda ni, ion. Dia tak boleh tiba-tiba, okay, you ada weak, uh, strong acid lah kata, you ada HCl. You ada Cl minus. Ada je dua-dua pasangan dia kan. Tapi dia bukan weak kan. So dia bukan buffer. Buffer dia mesti ada solution yang ada weak. Dan dia mesti pair. Dia tak boleh dalam uh, solution tu you ada HF, uh, dia dah weak dah. Tiba-tiba you ada Cl minus. Uh, contohlah eh, HF dengan CF. So dia bukan uh, pair lah kat situ. Okay. So sama juga dengan basic buffer lah. Contoh macam you ada ammonia, uh, uh, dia punya pair dia NH4+. So you boleh prepare buffer kat situ. Okay. So uh, boleh nampak eh saya contoh-contoh ni. So I hope uh, you tak komen, I assume you nampak. Okay. So both components, one and two must be present. This one. Okay. So tadi kan saya cakap dia mesti ada uh, mixture of weak acid and conjugate base ataupun weak base dengan conjugate acid. Kan ini maksudnya you ada acid, you you dissolvekan dia dalam air, dapatlah acid dengan conjugate base kan? Bolehlah jadi buffer. Tapi dia kan acid. Betul tak? So that's why dia kata a second yang question ni, both component one and two must be present. First, you must ada weak acid ataupun weak base and it's salt. Satu lagi yang kena ada adalah salt dia. Salt ni tak boleh sebarang salt. Salt yang datang daripada dia punya conjugate ion. Okay, saya ulang eh. Sebab tadi kan saya cakap uh, types of buffer, dia ada mixture of weak acid dengan conjugate base dia. So okay, HF ada weak acid. Bila you masuk je dalam air, dia pecah, dapatlah F minus conjugate base dia. Lepas tu, kenapa nak kena ada salt? Sebab remember, HF ni adalah acid. Dia not 100% dissociate. So the value of S F minus is very, 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 very small. X, value X is very, very small, right? Okay, sebab dia not 100% dissociation kan? 
So sebabkan you perlukan juga this concentration of F minus So you kena masukkan juga salt dalam solution tu So you imagine maksudnya you masukkan HF You kena masukkan juga salt dia Contohlah saya masukkan NAF HF you akan dapat nanti F minus plus water kan Tapi saya cakap F minus is very 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 small So macam ni dia nak jadi buffer betul tak? Concentration dia sangat-sangat kecil. So dia lebih pada jadi acid saja. So that's why you masukkan salt yang kena ada sama ion dia. Conjugate dia. So bila NaF you masuk dalam bekas tu, you akan pecah jadi apa? Na plus dengan F minus. So this F minus ni actually the conjugate base ni datang daripada salt. Bukan daripada weak acid punya dissociation tu. Okay, so that's why je eh, penuh sangat eh. That's why dalam buffer you have, you must have Apa saya tak lupa dalam ni? You must have both component. Salt, salt dia bu, sama lah eh, bukan sebarang salt lah. Salt yang uh, related dengan weak acid or weak base tu. Okay, dua-dua tu lah kena ada. So, buffer solution macam tadi eh. Buffer ni apa benda sebenarnya? You nak prepare benda ni untuk apa? It is actually can resist changes in pH. Okay. When small amounts of acid or base are added to it. Maksud dia, you prepare. Okay, you dah masukkan tadi HF. Lepas tu you masukkan NAF, you prepare. Lepas tu nak buat apa? Bila you prepare satu buffer ni. Okay. Okay, you dah dapatlah solution buffer tu. Uh, contoh maksudnya you akan dapat apa ni? Acidic buffer kan? Tiba-tiba you dah prepare ni, you nak masukkan pula small amount of acid at base. Contoh saya nak masuk HCl. Strong acid kan? Small amount lah eh. Jangan cakap big amount eh. Small amount, okay. Dia boleh resist changes in pH. Means that perubahan pH uh, dalam buffer dia tak tak ketara. Okay. Itu, itu kegunaan buffer sebenarnya dalam uh, uh, acid base. Okay. So sama jugalah konsep dia untuk basic buffer. So kat sini uh, of course maksudnya dalam buffer dia akan contain both acid and base species. Okay kejap eh saya, saya baru teringat. Saya ada satu gambar nak tunjuk tapi dia dekat dalam slide saya yang satu lagi. Kejap eh. Eh kat mana Sebab saya rasa mungkin nak bagi you nampak. Boleh nampak tak ni? Ah nampak tak? Nampak. Ha. Nampak. Ini adalah pH meter. Uh, version yang lama lah eh. <laughs> kalau kat lab kita pun bukan macam ni dah pH meter dia. Ah uh, Ini pH meter kalau nampak uh, ini dia punya elektrod atau bulb dia. Uh, okay. Yang untuk kita celupkan tu you boleh baca pH. Okay. Maksud tadi buffer tadi kan. Macam uh, apa gunanya buffer ni kan. Okay contoh eh. Kat sini, the effect of adding acid or base to an unbuffered and buffered solution. Contoh unbuffered solution, uh, pH 5. Maksudnya ini adalah acid. Maksudnya dia bukan buffer eh, dia acid. Acid saja. Contohlah HF lah eh. Tadi saya cakap HF. Lepas tu kat sini buffer solution. Buffered solution, pH 5 juga. Tapi kat sini dia ada HF plus NAF. Ha, nampak tak? Ada beza eh. Solution tu ada beza tapi pH tu sama. Okay, lepas tu dia kata uh, dia try nak masukkan uh, 1 ml of strong acid which is HCl contoh. Uh, small amount lah eh, masukkan HCl. Kalau you masuk HCl, you nampak kat sini. pH dia terus drop jadi 2. Strong acid kan? HCl you masuk dalam HF. Dah lah HF tu memang acid, you masuk pula HCl. So maksudnya you masuk apa? You masuk H2O plus concentration of HCl. So terus je drop jadi dua. You tengok pula buffered solution, bila you masuk HCl juga, 1 ml sama, amount dia sama, dia cuma drop 0.02. Nampak? Dia jadi 4.98. So kat sini maksud buffer. Dia resist pH changes. Dia nak cuba bertahan selagi boleh. 
Okay uh, sebab tu kita mention perkataan small amount Sebab kalau banyak itu kita dah masuk bawah uh, uh, buffer uh, capacity uh, So buffer ni pun dia ada capacity dia uh, Kita akan pergi tu nanti in details Okay so sama juga if you add uh, base Contoh eh tadi unbuffered kan PHU you acid tadi HF Lepas tu you masukkan 1 ml of sodium hydroxide Terus naik jadi 12 Kan strong base kan you masuk NaOH How about kalau buffer solution, dia naik berapa? Dia plus 0.02 sahaja. Okay, small amount. So ini maksudnya apa kegunaan buffer, buffer solution and also unbuffered solution. Apa beza dia? Okay, boleh ya eh? clear? Saya lupa nak masukkan gambar ni. Sebab banyak sangat benda berubah eh? sebab ni slide saya lama. Okay. So patah balik pada slide yang ni. So ini yang maksud saya buffer solution resist changes in pH. That's why macam saya cakap uh, kalau kata asid di buffer dah ada weak acid dengan conjugate base. Itu dia cuma mata-mata weak acid saja. Conjugate base dia pula value dia very very small. Lepas tu you kena ada salt juga dekat dalam tu. Okay saya akan explain nanti uh, kan ada bawah tajuk uh, explain qualitatively how how actually how buffer works. Sebenarnya apa yang berlaku saya akan explain lah later eh. Okay yang penting saya nak you faham dululah buffer ni ah ini konsep dia. Okay so first kita pergi dulu. Ah, ini tak silap saya dah ada perubahan lah slide eh. So kalau you ada slide yang asal tu nanti later you take note lah ada perubahan-perubahan kat sini. Okay so kita tadi ada dua kan uh, acidic and basic buffer. So how about acidic buffer. So tadi saya ada macam draw sikit kan buffer solution means that you add weak acid dan conjugate base. And selalunya conjugate base yang kita add ni adalah from its salt. Okay. So contoh kat sini you masukkan acetic acid. Okay. And then you masuk sodium acetate. Sodium acetate ni bila you masuk kita nak conjugate base kan. Yang you akan masuk adalah CH3, COO and A. Tapi kat dalam ni nanti you akan dapat dipecahkan CH3, COO minus and also NA plus Okay, acetic acid ni memang ada. Okay, equation dia apa? Reak acid kan dalam acetic acid tu ada apa? Kita ada CH3, COOH plus water dapat apa? CH3, COO minus plus uh, H3O plus kan? So that's why ada H3O plus. So CH3, COO minus ni basically this one adalah from acid ni small, very small amount. Small amount. Yang banyak tu dia datang daripada salt. Dissociation of salt. Okay. So that's why kat sini sama ada you put as salt plus uh, base. Uh, uh, base plus salt plus weak acid ataupun dia punya ion terus pun tak apa. Dia punya conjugate base plus uh, uh, weak acid. Okay. So same goes to basic buffer. Okay sama juga contoh kat sini uh, we have we base and also conjugate acid kan. So we have ammonia so dia punya conjugate acid dia uh, basically ammonia kan NH3 conjugate acid dia mesti ada NH4 plus kan. So NH4 plus you boleh dapat daripada salt. Salt dia adalah ammonium chloride. So ammonium chloride you pecah kan you dapat NH4 plus dengan Cl minus. Yang ammonia ni tadi you pecah kan bronsted lowry equation kan tambah water you pecah you dapat NH4 plus plus OH minus walaupun dia ada tapi uh, dia punya amount dia very small okay so bila dia very small sebenarnya that's why concentration of NH4 plus mainly came from salt okay so ada juga OH minus so ini dia punya mesti ada dua-dua tu eh Okay. So biasanya application kita kat belakang kan tapi di situ dulu. Okay tak apalah. So application of buffer ni sebenarnya sangat banyak. Okay. Yang paling dekat di hati. Ha, dekat awak ni lah in the body. Okay. Kita nak maintain the pH of blood. Okay. So uh, a buffer. Kita ada buffer eh. Okay. Dalam uh, kita punya blood ni. Okay. We have carbonic acid and also hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so this is the weak acid, this is the conjugate base. 
Okay, keep the pH of the bloodstream at neutral 7.4 as any deviation from the human blood. Okay, so dia mesti around this one, you kan? So dia tak boleh kurang, dia tak boleh lebih. Ha, itu kegunaan buffer. Okay, so the buffer within the human body is the hemoglobin complex. Yang ni you boleh baca sendiri lah kat situ kan. Yang penting saya add this one lah. Okay, dalam slide tambahan tu tak ada. So macam ni lah maksud dia. Kalau uh, normal, buffer tu dia akan maintain to it dapat 7.4. You kurang sikit acidosis. You lebih sikit jadi alkalosis. You lebih banyak, kurang banyak. Ha, dapat ni lah. Ha, yang merah ni. Okay, so ini kegunaan buffer eh. Okay, ada juga, okay, in our daily products, okay, commercial products, in the shampoo, baby lotion, okay. Ha. Tengok ni lah, before macam ni lah. <laughs> After lah, cantik rambut dia. Dah macam rebonding lah. Okay, so yang penting kat sini sambut, semua pakai application of buffer, okay. Contoh shampoo, dia punya buffer dia ada citric acid and also sodium hydroxide. Dia nak balancekan the uh, alkalinity. Okay, dia tak boleh terlalu uh, alkali kan Nanti habis rosak you punya rambut Okay, so kat sini pun uh, Macam baby lotion, buffer to a slightly acidic pH Kan macam biasa kan macam anything yang untuk muka ke Dia 5.5, selalu iklan kan 5.5 So, mesti um, maintain around that pH saja kan Dia tak boleh terlalu rendah, tak boleh terlalu tinggi Kan sebab nanti nanti rosak pula kulit muka kan ha, Ni macam untuk baby lotion lagi lah bahaya kan So that's why maksudnya kat sini akan ada buffer kat situ Untuk re resist the pH changes ya eh. Okay so when we look at this checkpoint <coughs> Which one of the following is a buffer solution? Hmm. A, B, C, D, E nombor satu Dia rasa yang mana? Ni tak payah kira pun. Tengok je. Rasa? Anyone? What is buffer? Adakah B2 buffer? No. Dia ada asid saja kan? So dia bukan buffer. Adakah KCN ni buffer? Also hmm. no. no. Because this is only salt. Ni asid. So antara A, C and E. A. Which one? Y, A? Weak acid. Yes. Remember, dia mesti from weak acid or weak base sahaja. So this is weak acid. HNO3 is a strong acid. Tiga tolak, tiga tolak satu dua strong acid eh. I hope you remember eh. Macam nak kira, nak cepat. HCl strong acid lah kan. So jawapan dia A lah. Free acid dengan salt dia. Okay number two. Identify the mixture that yields a buffer solution when equal volumes of the two solution are mixed. Which one? Now kalau you simply a quick glance you tengok concentration semua sama. So apa yang kita boleh tengok? Tengoklah dia HCl, strong acid. Terus je. Ha. Strong acid mana boleh. Betul tak? Ni 4 tolak 1, 3. Strong acid juga. HNO3, 3 tolak 1. Tadi dah salah lah kan? HBr, also strong acid. Jawapan lain tak ada. E lah saja. Okay? A and E eh. Habis masa lah. Kedua kedua kejam saya. Hmm, habis masa. Sebab hmm, kalau saya cerita ni panjang lagi ceritanya ni. Apa? Uh, at least you ada sedikit pengenalan berkenaan dengan SCG panjang. Banyak lagi, banyak lagi. Okey tak apa. Banyak macam ni pun kita kena Teruskan. Tak boleh laju sangat kan nanti you all tak faham pula. Any question so far? Uh, maksudnya daripada yang awal tadi. Ada soalan tak? So far okay eh? Boleh faham eh? 
Untuk yang titration semua, titration punya part tu I hope kalau you tak ingat you please recap lah Okay so uh, sebab saya buat ada kelas sekejap lagi By the way uh, saya dah post uh, untuk tutorial uh, Macam biasa lah eh jangan lupa nama-nama yang ada tu Please uh, submit your tutorial answers uh, accordingly lah ikut uh, senarai nama yang saya bagi tu eh Untuk ikut Ikut deadline yang saya bagi Okay so with that I think we can continue our session tomorrow Okay so with uh, so we end here with Tasbih Kafaro and Surah Tulangs Okay thank you everyone Thank you me 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 Thank you me